okay uh, now let's see some of the advanced use cases um, of the rod 53 uh, that uh, does comes a lot that does come a lot in the exam so which is hybrid dns so we have our reason and uh, there is a route 53 resolver route 53 resolver and by default this resolver is going to automatically answer dns queries for local domain names uh, for ec2 instances for example here's our vpc has been given in the diagram uh, and we have an ec2 instance um, for example here's uh, that vpc ec2 instance and uh, there is is this dns name of the ec2 instance now the route 53 resolver knows how to reply to these queries so this is fine okay any records in your private hosted zone as well as is going to be going to be easy to answer to and records in public name servers has been uh, public name servers where it can go for a uh, public hosted zones or any named server out there that is public on the internet now if you want to resolve dns queries between your vpc and uh, other private networks uh, your own networks that has the other dns resolves then you are going to need a hybrid dns so these networks can be a paired vpc for example or it could be an on premise network uh, that is going to be connected to uh, vpc through direct connect or aws vpc so for this uh, let me introduce you to let me introduce you to some concepts that we are going to see with the diagram in the next slides so these are about the resolver endpoint so there's two things uh, there's an inbound endpoint and an outbound endpoint so inbound endpoint endpoint are allowing dns resolvers on your external networks to forward dns queries uh, to your route 53 resolver and answer these queries so these resolvers will help resolve domain names uh, so for the resource of the AWS, for example, your EC2 instances or records uh, that you create in your Route 53 private hosted zones. So you would get uh, both answers for your internal systems and also for the private hosted zones. Uh, so uh, private hosted zones, Route 53 private hosted zones. So you would get both answers for your internal systems and also for uh, uh just list me aws private hosted zones yeah private hosted zones uh, also for the private hosted zones and it will show your diagram it will make a lot more sense very very soon uh now very uh now your outbound endpoint is to conditionally forward dns queries to your on-premise dns resolvers and for this we are going to create resolver rules to forward them now we associate these endpoints with one or more VPCs uh, within the same region and we create in two availability zones for high availability. Now each endpoint supports about 10,000 queries per second per IP address. And if you need more while you create uh, some more IP address and uh, these resolvers uh, on AWS, these resolvers, uh, they need from uh, the need from before uh, like before where people had to run their own DNS resolvers on AWS and uh, link them link them to their resolvers on premises now these are managed resolvers endpoints on by AWS so let's have a look at a diagram that will make a lot more sense to understand it so this is the diagram uh, so let's uh, uh, here we have an EC2 instance this two instance a app dot aws dot private uh, it lives in a vpc and we have a private hosted zones that we create for example uh, semi private okay so and uh, we have a uh, we have that the uh, private vpc that's aws dot private and we have also an on premise data center that has a server on premise data center and dns servers we have uh, something like we have been hidden by me so that is the web dot on premise dot private so now if you look at the ec2 instance i have i i have given it a c name of aws app dot aws dot private uh, okay this is the c name which has the links maybe uh, to it's a ec2 or the dns or it could be an a record link to the private private ip of the ec2 instance it doesn't matter right 
and uh, the that was happening is that the server at the web dot on premise dot private uh, wants to access the EC2 instance, and so first uh, the on premise data center and the AWS cloud are going to be linked using a VPN connection, VPN or DX connection. Uh, VPN or direct connect connection. And now we are going to have on premise as well as some DNS resolvers for obviously the zone of our on premise data center. So they are going to be for the zone uh, on premise dot private, on premise dot private. Uh, and uh, or now then when when the server will issue a DNS query for app dot AWS dot private. The DNS resolvers are going to say, "Hey, uh, you know what? I don't know these, uh, but what? Uh, so, but what we are going to happen in is that we are going to create a resolver inbound endpoint, and behind the scenes, this resolver inbound endpoint has two ENIs, Elastic Network Interface, again for high availability. Uh, now, these ENIs are associated with private IP addresses. So, what's going to happen is that within our DNS resolvers." On premises, uh, we are going to say that uh, for the domain name AWS dot private, uh, we are going to forward these two IPs. And uh, what's going to happen is that the, now the DNS query for app dot AWS dot private matches this domain uh, domain name, and that was configured on premises. And therefore, the DNS resolver is going to say, "Hey, I know I should I should forward these queries to DNS server uh, that has this information." So it's going to forward them to these IPs, and now the resolver endpoint is linked to the route 53 through resolver, and then from the private hosted zone, we are going to get our final lookup, and uh, that would give us the final information for this query. So this is what's called an inbound endpoint because the request come in from the exterior and go inbound on AWS, uh, so on premise to AWS. So uh, as uh, you may expect, uh, the outbound endpoints are quite similar as of the inbound endpoints, but they go the other way. So we have again the same setup, the same setup, but this time we want to be able to resolve the DNS names of the on-premise data center. So our EC2 instance is going to ask our Route 53 resolver, uh, do you know about uh, web.onpremise.private? So, and for this, uh, we are going to create a resolver outbound endpoint which has two different ENIs. Um, and uh, we are going to create a forwarding rule which uh, you are saying, hey, uh, for on premise.private, uh, there is the target IP, there is this the target IP, and uh, this target IP corresponds to the IP of my DNS resolver on premises. So, the Route 53 resolver is going to send this to its endpoints, and the endpoints is going to forward the DNS query into the on-premise DNS resolver, on-premise DNS resolvers, and then we will have automatically the response from the records stored in the DNS of our on-premises data center. Uh, now, now to manage this outbound endpoint, uh, we need resolver rules. Uh, so the outbound endpoint is going to consent to have a set of rules and it's going to explain how to forward DNS queries to your network. Uh, so there's conditional forwarding, uh, which, it, which are the forwarding rules. Uh, so forwarding rules. Uh, so the idea is that we are going to say for the specific DNS queries in, the, in this domain, uh, please match all of it to a target IP address. So we can say for example .com or uh, acme.example.com here is the target IP or here are the target IPs for these domains. Uh, you can also override that, override them with a system rule and a, uh, and this is to define the uh, define the overriding behavior which is saying like hey for the whole subdomain do not use these forwarding rules. This could be something you can create and uh, then finally uh, we have auto defined systems uh, that uh, you will be able to see that now uh, system some uh, uh, system uh, uh, auto defined system rules uh, like that would be for the domains that we know are resolved internally 
for example, the main names that are internal to AWS or the private hosted zones, for example, like compute.amazonaws.com or ec2.internal. Now, in case of multiple rules matched, the Route 53 resolver is going to choose the most specific match in terms of how to choose which uh, which uh, route to apply. Uh, so this is it uh, and uh, this is how you have hybrid DNS on AWS. Uh, remember inbound endpoints and the outbound endpoints uh, usually uh, are used together to have in and out traffic from your both DNS system uh, from AWS and uh, on-premises and the exam will ask you about them for sure. And that's it for this lecture uh, and uh, I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next one.